Okay, today we are going to be learning about two-dimensional figures. So this is pretty an interesting lesson about finding the perimeters and areas of polygons, triangles, rectangles, etc. using the distance formula. Previously you've measured one-dimensional figures and today we're going to identify and name polygons and find the perimeter, surf circumference, and area of two-dimensional figures. We've got quite a bit of new vocabulary. Well, it may not be so new to you, but we're going to be using in our lesson today. Polygon, the vertex of a polygon, concave, convex, ingon, equilateral polygon, equal angular polygon, regular polygon, perimeter, circumference, area. Okay, our key concept. Uh, the, the name polygon, this word polygon, is derived from a Greek word meaning many angles. Notice this polygon has many angles, doesn't it? H, J, K, they're all angles. The sides of a polygon are made by two points, and the vertex is where uh, two sides meet. So I'm going to give you just a moment to read about polygons. Uh, one thing to note is a polygon is a close figure formed by a finite number. Do you know what finite means? Well, when I think of finite, the, uh, the opposite of finite is infinite. That means it goes on forever. Finite means that it's got a certain amount. It's, you can count it. It's permanent. It doesn't keep going forever. Now, polygons can be concave or convex. And so we're going to name the polygon by its number of sides. So how many sides does this polygon have? Good, it's got four sides, so what do you call that one? Yeah, quadrilateral. We can't say anything more about it because it's not marked telling us it's either a square or rectangle or a parallelogram. What we do know, it's got four sides. So we're going to go with the, the most general, generic term, quadrilateral. Now we're going to classify it as convex or concave. Now, one thing uh, to know that if it's concave, say these sides kept continuing on in all directions. So this side would continue on this way, this side would continue on this way. You know that it's convex if these lines would not cross the, into the interior. It, these lines will not go into the interior of this figure. So you know it's convex. I think concave, it caves in because it, if you continue those sides, it would cave into the interior. So if it's a regular polygon if its sides are the same measure and its angles are the exact same measure. Notice this figure has one tick marks, two ticks, three ticks, four ticks. That tells me all of these sides have a different measure. So it's a quadrilateral that is convex and it is irregular. Okay, so let's look at the next example. How many sides does this have? <coughs> Excuse me. Are these sides all the same measure? If you were to continue drawing this line, would it cross the interior of this figure? Hmm, it does. This figure has nine sides, so it's called a nonagon. And if you look on page 57 of your text, it has names for a variety um, it depends on the number of sides, so it gives you all the proper names of the polygon. So nine sides is a nonagon. Is it concave or convex? It's concave because some of the lines would cross into the anterior if you kept going. And the, since it's concave, one thing you need to know about concave, all concave polygons are irregular. Only a convex polygon can be regular. Very good. So now it's time to check your progress. So I want you to pause the video for a moment, look at your selections, and then come back and we'll talk about your answer. Well, it is a triangle, so we can throw out C, can't we? If you continue the sides, do they cross inside? Nope. 
they stay on the outside of the figure so it's convex and as you see every side's the same measure every angle's the same measure so it's a regular polygon how about this one okay it is a quadrilateral that's all we know about that it's got four sides it is convex if you continue the sides on they don't cross into the interior but it's irregular even though all four sides are the same measure we're not told that all four angles are the same measure, so it is irregular. Good job. Now these you've been working with since you were in elementary school. Um, I'm gonna, I want you to take just a moment to write these formulas in your notes. Go ahead and draw the figures. You, you should be very familiar with those, but that doesn't hurt to go ahead and put the figures, the perimeter, and the area formula and for each figure. So take just a few moments to do that. So now we're asked to find the perimeter and area of the figure. And one thing I noticed last year, students didn't read the whole uh, problem and they'd give me the perimeter but not the area. And so when, even when they took the test they were missing out on some points. So to make sure you take the time to read through the whole problem. Okay, so we're finding the perimeter and the area of this figure. What figure, what shape is this? Yes, it's a rectangle. So the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So all we have to do is substitute in the length, 4.6, the width, 2.3, and simplify. Don't forget to label. You will get points counted off for not labeling. If it doesn't tell you if it's centimeters, feet, or inches, put the word units here. I'm looking for a label. It's extremely important. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 13 and 8 tenths centimeters. Now let's find the area. Always start by writing down what the formula is. Okay, so the formula for area is length times width. Now just substitute in. If you go ahead and write the formula, it'll help you not make mistakes quite so much. Multiply them together, so the area of the rectangle is about 10.6. Now notice, area is centimeter times centimeter, so we get centimeters squared. That's important. Perimeter is just one unit, and an area, it's units squared. Find the circumference and area of this figure. Oh, we know we've got a circle, and the word circumference is the perimeter of a circle. We're given radius, so we're going to use 2 pi r. If we were given diameter, we'd use circumference as equal to pi times diameter. But since we're given radius, 2 times pi times 4. And notice this is approximately equal to. When you see these squiggly equal signs, because we're, we're rounding, we're cutting off. There, there's more numbers that come on out here. So we can't say it's equal to 25.1 unless in your calculator you come up with exactly 25.1. So if there are more numbers, then put approximately equal to. That's important as well. So the circumference of the circle is about 25.1 inches. Okay, let's go on and find the area. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So pi times 4 squared is approximately equal to 50.3. The area of this circle is about 50.3 square inches. So notice the word about is used when we've got this approximately equal to. Good job. And it's square inches, okay, because we're squaring R. Okay, time for you to check your progress. Find the perimeter and the area of the figure. Now, on these you can sort of cheat because notice the perimeter is all different. So if you're in a hurry, running out of time, if you find the one, you know you're going to have the other, but the practice is good for you. So pause the video and then we'll come back. Okay, the perimeter of this figure is 2 times length plus 2 times the width, 24.8 centimeters. And the area is length times width. 8.1 times 4.3 and it's 34.83 centimeters squared. Good job. Let's find the circumference and area of this figure. So pause for a moment then come back. 
Good job, folks. The, centimeter, the circumference is approximately equal to 50.3 meters, and the area is approximately equal to 201.1 meters squared. Excellent job. Now, something you might see on the test. So pause just a moment and read this. Notice on this one you're going to have to find, this says which of these shapes has a perimeter or circumference that would use most or all of the tape. So you've got to go and find the perimeter of every one of these figures. So you're asked to compare the perimeters or circumferences of four different shapes. So find each perimeter or circumference. So that's for the square, the circle, 2 times pi times r, so approximately 18.85 feet. Now for the right triangle, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. a squared plus b squared, which are the two legs, equals the hypotenuse squared. Then you have to take your, you've got c squared is equal to 72. You're solving for c, so you have to take the square root of both sides. So the circumference is approximately equal to 8.49. Now the perimeter of the triangle, the rectangle. So the only shape for which Terry has enough tape is the circle. So the correct answer would be B. So that's a lot of work, isn't it? So now time to check your progress. This is going to take just a little bit. Each of the following shapes has a perimeter of 88 inches. So you know the perimeter of each one of these is the same. Which one has the greatest area? Yes, that means that you have to go find the area of a re this rectangle, this square, this right triangle, and the circle to find out which one has the greatest area. So pause the video, take time to work this out, and then come back and check your answer. A circle with radius of 14 inches. Good job. Now we're going to find perimeter and area on the coordinate plane. Find the perimeter and area of a pentagon, so we've got a five-sided figure, A, B, C, D, E, and, and they give us the coordinates of each of these points. Now you can use the distance formula to find the perimeter of a polygon graphed on a coordinate plane. Notice that this one's easy because we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Because it goes straight across. This one also is straight. One, two, three, four, five. So we don't have to use the distance formula. We know the distance between these two points is five units, and the distance between these two points is six units. However, these go at a diagonal. So we're going to have to actually use the distance formula for these three sides. And we've written our distance formula down again. We're going to use that to find AB, BC, and EA. So they just start substituting in the numbers. So AB is approximately 5.7, BC 4.1, and EA. And you did this in your last lesson, so you've had plenty of practice with distance formula. Then we take all these measurements and we add them together. Now notice we had some approximately equal to, so it's about 25 units. We weren't told if it was inches, centimeters, or feet, or whatever, so units. Now to find the area, we're going to divide this pentagon into triangles and rectangles. So there's one triangle, another triangle, and now we have a rectangle. So now we can find the area of this triangle, area of this triangle, area of this rectangle, and add them together. The area triangle one. The area is one half times the base times the height. So the base is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it goes across six. And the height, one, two, three. Okay, so one half six times three. The area of this first one is nine. Okay, triangle two. Let's look. Base is one, two, three, four. Goes across five, doesn't it? Base and height is only one. Okay. So the area of this one's 2.5. Now let's look at the area of the rectangle. Length times width. Well, we've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six times one, two, three, four, five. So the area is 30. Now let's add all those areas together and it's 41.5 square units. So the perimeter is about 25 units and the area is 41.5 square units. Okay, time to check your progress. We're to find the perimeter of this quadrilateral, W, X, Y, Z. Are any of these straight lines? Oh no, we don't get out easy on this one, so we have to use the distance formula to find the distance of X, W, W, Z, Z, Y, and Y, X. We have to use that distance formula to find all those measures. So come back in a little bit and check your answer. Did you get 17.9? Awesome job. If you didn't, why don't you go back and look at your math. Probably the, the problem is in there. So uh, continue working that one until you get 17.9. Excellent job, folks. You're ready to begin the exercises.